हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू माई चैनल दिस इज़ द सेकेंड वीडियो लेक्चर इन द इकोनॉमिक सीरीज ऑफ यू पी एस सी दैट वी आर डूइंग नाउ दिस इज़ टू इन्फॉर्म ऑल ऑफ यू दैट द वीडियोज ऑन दिस सीरीज और द वीडियोज ऑन दिस सीरीज इन दिस चैनल विल बी अवेलेबल फ्राम नाउ ऑन इन बोथ हिंदी एंड इंग्लिश सो दैट ऑल ऑफ यू हु आर फ्राम नॉन हिंदी स्पीकिंग बेल्ट कैन ऑल्सो यू नो अंडरस्टैंड इकोनॉमिक्स इन अ बेटर वे एंड आई कैन गाइड यू पीपल टू सो दैट यू कम आउट विद फ्लाइंग कलर्स and uh, for all those people who are already following this channel so hindi mein maine videos already upload kar diya hai uh, dusra video agar aap hindi mein use dekh rahe hain and if you are more comfortable in hindi to aap ja kar ke wo video dekh sakte hain so let's begin now uh, today we will see national income what is the need to measure national income what are the different ways in which we can measure it gross domestic product net domestic product gross national product and net national product these are the four ways Uh, I will cover each one of them individually in different videos because the length of the video is also a very important thing. But today I'll do gross domestic product, and then finally we will do how to calculate gross domestic product, not in the mathematical sense, but in the sense that the different concepts related to calculation of gross domestic product. And finally, I'll give you MCQs that have come in previous years in UPSC so that you know that what you are understanding is relevant. okay and you can evaluate yourself that what you have read and what you have understood and if you and you can work upon the areas on which you think that you need to understand more comprehensively fine so what is national income national income is basically the earning of a nation through various economic activities in which it indulges now what are the economic activities both internal economic activities and external economic activities what are internal economic activities internal economic activities are all the activities that take place inside the territory of a nation which involve monetary transaction so you understand internal uh, internal monetary activity that is uh, if you go to the market and you purchase a packet of biscuit and you pay the shopkeeper for it that is a monetary activity for then what happens is for example you are giving tuitions and you are getting paid by it so that is a monetary activity but on the other hand when you are giving tuitions to your siblings that is not a monetary that does not involve a monetary uh, exchange so that is not an economic activity so basically in national income accounts for all the economic activities that are happening inside the territory of a nation and external economic activities includes all the transactions that a nation is making outside its territory by which it is having monetary gains fine it might also have monetary losses but then all the economic activities that a nation has outside its territory that involve monetary exchange some examples for example if i say that um, india has given loan to any country and the other country to whom it has given loan actually pays back the interest to india so that interest that india is getting from that country that is an economic activity external economic activity another example of external economic activity is the loans and grants that we get from united nations development program undp so again money is flowing from outside to inside the country so that is again a monetary help or a monetary uh, activity external monetary activity then another example is we have indian nationals who are staying outside the country in various parts of the globe and who send money to their families who are staying in the country that also is an external economic activity so taking into account both the internal and the external activity of a nation when we calculate it we call it national income and national income is very important because it shows the strength of a nation and why the strength of a nation is important why do we need to know and evaluate our strength from time to time firstly so that we can understand at which position we are standing it the same cases with the nation as well you know it helps them to formulate better policies to all those uh, to rbi governor then to the finance minister if they know what is their internal strength what is their external strength then they can act upon things and they can take more judicious decisions this is one thing now the strength of a nation is also important because uh, for example if a political leader or any leader from india goes to the goes to some foreign meeting or somewhere and they are having a discussion and he is laying out an opinion so if india is a developing country and india has greater economic activity both inside and outside the territory then automatically the weightage of his opinion increases because it is an expanding economy so but do not mistake it for the fact that 
uh, the you know opinion of the leaders the opinion of a country depends only on the monetary or the economic position of the country no it also depends on the geo strategic location of the country how the country you know it has relations it's in, with its neighbors the neighbors it has and you know. so these are also important factors but just to give you an idea it is very important to evaluate the strength of a nation as well now there are four ways as i have already said to uh, measure national income so you know it gdp ndp gnp and nnp now gdp and ndp that is gro gross domestic product and net domestic product they show the internal strength of a country why because as the name domestic product itself suggests that they count all the economic activity that is happening inside the territory of india so that is showing the internal strength of a country and gross national product and net national product they show the external strength because their name itself suggests national product it includes all the economic activities that is being done by the nationals outside india where the money is coming to india or some kind of a monetary transaction is happening with india okay so basically it covers both internal and external monetary affairs in itself so that shows the external strength of a nation fine now let's move on to the next thing that what is the need to measure national income see i have already given you a brief idea but first is we need to measure national income so that we can measure the growth of our country we usually talk you know that our gdp has increased our gdp has decreased our gdp is increasing it has become stagnant and so on how do we do that we do that by trusting on these figures that we get by dif by calculating national income through the through different processes isn't it so what happens it helps us to measure the economic growth of a country then is if a government knows what is the what it's what, how much is it growing what is its economic growth what can it do it can make better policies to sustain and increase the growth for example we say that india is a growing economy so so the government can make proper policies so that it can sustain its growth and it can also help or it, you know it can also form policies so that the growth processes process increases you know so that the growth process increases and it happens at a more faster rate it also helps the government to set practical targets what do i mean by practical targets by practical targets i mean that uh, when you know national income is calculated they also ha show that what is the, what are the incomes that are coming from various sectors like agricultural sector is contributing this particular amount to the national income the manufacturing sector is uh, contributing this much to national uh, to national income the service sector is contributing a different amount so when the government sees all these figures that what sector is contributing how much the government knows that what is the sector that is lagging behind and how much it needs to invest on that sector so it helps the government to set practical targets then because of this the corporates can plan their business investment for example if we have a tractor company and in the national income for a particular financial year if it is shown that the national income in this uh, that the contribution of agricultural sector in the national income has increased and is increasing you know so what happens is the ceo of this tractor company he knows that the agricultural sector in india is blossoming so what he will calculate in his mind is that means the farmer is making more money so he will try to increase his income even further so he will invest on proper uh, equipments so that sale of my tractors is going to increase because he will assume that the demand of tractors is going to increase in the coming times so he will ask his company to manufacture tractors in greater quantity than it was doing earlier so this is how it helps corporates you know and to plan their business investments because we know this rule that if supply is more and demand is less then what happens the prices of the tractors will fall on the other hand if the supply is uh, less and demand is more then what happens the prices will increase so in order to make an equilibrium the in order to you know have a stability in an economy both of demand and supply need to be in an equilibrium and this helps the corporates to as i said to take proper business uh, decisions and then the most important thing is knowing national income and calculating economic growth helps us to prevent any major jolts like inflation and deflation in the economy why say because what we can do is in a globalized economy we do not have much control over what 
economic activities are happening in different nations so we cannot really do much about what kind of economic policy america is taking what kind of economic policy china is taking what kind of economic policy is sri lanka taking we do not have much say in that or rather we do not have any say in that but we can keep ourselves prepared that just in case if there is a recession in any of these countries being a globalized economy it will affect the whole world but then what we do what we can do is we can always plan and so keep ourselves prepared and this happens only when we know where we are standing and national income tells us exactly that where we are standing fine so these are these are a few needs why we need to measure national income and all the countries in the world today they measure national income periodically from time to time next is gross domestic product what do we mean by gross domestic product gross domestic product simply means the final value of all the final goods and services that are produced within the territory of a country in a particular financial year just do not be bogged down by such a lengthy uh, you know definition what it simply means is whatever final goods and services that we get in the market for example you go to a market and you buy a jute bag or you buy you know a laptop or you buy a cell phone that is a final good so when we are calculating gdp what we add is the value of this laptop that you have taken or bought from the market the value of the jute bag that you have bought from the market gdp does not calculate the what you know the jute that the farmer had sold to this uh, producer who has produced the produced the jute bag or we do not calculate the price of what a wheat seller has taken or f- when he had sold his wheat to the producer of some biscuit company because if we calc- if we take because that too is a product when they are saying when a jute farmer is selling jute to a producer that jute that raw jute is his product but we do not calculate that raw jute because what we are doing is we are directly calculating and the mrp of the jute bag because when a producer is you know setting up a mrp that this is the maximum retail price of my product he is already including in itself the amount at which it has purchased the jute from the farmer so if we calculate in both steps that if we if we calculate the jute that has been sold uh, sold by the farmer as well as the mrp you know then what happens the same jute is you know calculated twice okay so the it's not that the jute is produ- produced two times or three times that is a simple jute that has been sold in one time and that would be counted twice if we did not ca- uh, cal- uh, you know add only the final value of goods and services this is meant by the final value adding only the final value of goods and services it excludes the primary selling that is there whenever we are producing a product all the primary raw materials that are being sold by the seller of the raw material that is his product but that is not taken into account simply the f- the finished goods what we go and buy from the market are only taken into account because the rest everything that is there the uh, things that have been included you know in making that are already counted when we calculate the mrp you know not calculate rather when we uh, add the mrp of different products that have been produced in a economy so that is what is meant by gross domestic product calculating the final value of the final goods and services that have been produced within the territory of a country now since this is my second video lecture i had already covered this gross domestic product in details in my first uh, video like i had done what uh, this definition of what is de- gross domestic product and what is the difference between real gdp and nominal gdp so uh, if you can understand hindi a bit you can just go and refer to that video else uh, i'll just give you a brief idea about what is real gdp and what is nominal gdp see real gdp is uh, let's first see what is nominal gdp nominal gdp is nothing but a gdp that is calculated on the price of a particular product in the current year in which it has been calculated for example for if i calculate the gdp of a country in 2060 so what will i do is i'll see all the goods and services that have been produced in 2016 in that country and i will take the market price of the finished goods that have that were there i'll add them up and get a value and i'll say this is the gdp 
but in real gdp what happens is i will cut down the inflation and to calculate real gdp another concept comes in that is called the base effect or the base year now what is a base year see a base year is something which is taken as a reference point it is kind of a constant price for example the present base year is 2011 12 that means whenever gdp will be calculated now the real gdp when it will be calculated what will happen is for example if they calculate if they want to calculate the real gdp of 2016 first they will take all the goods and services that were produced in 2016 and add their mrp that is their the final value and they will get a figure then what they will do is they will compare that figure with the figure that were there in 2011 12 for example a, a biscuit packet if it costs rupees 16 in uh, 2016 and in 11 12 the same biscuit packet maybe it, it costed then around rupees uh, 10 so what is happening is in 11 12 the same packet the same biscuit packet the in 2011 12 the same biscuit packet costs uh, rupees uh, 10 but in 2016 no extra biscuit has been produced but the same packet is now costing rupees 16 so what has happened the production is the same but in between inflation has increased so what will so if we calculate compare only nominal gdp then what happens is we will obviously get a higher figure than what the nominal gdp was in 2011 12 fine but has the production increased no the production has remained the same just inflation in between has increased and because in nominal gdp we are adding the market the market price or the market value that is there we are getting a higher number so in order to get a proper understanding whether we are really growing or not whether the gdp whether production in a country is increasing or not the more reliable value is real gdp and real gdp is what a gdp the nominal gdp that is adjusted to the base effect in from which inflation has been deducted that is nominal gdp from which inflation has been deducted that leads to real gdp fine now there are three ways in which we can measure gdp so we have already said that yes this is gdp and this is a difference there are two kinds of gdps real and nominal now we need to know how do we do this how do we calculate gdp now there are three ways to do it first is expenditure method then is income method then is output method and the result that we get by all these methods should be the same technically they should be the same why because see when we are calculating gross domestic product by expenditure method or by income method or by output method ultimately production in that year remains the same it's not that if we are calculating the gdp of 2016 if we calculate by expenditure method the number of products that produce that were produced in 2016 miraculously increases or the number if we calculate it by income method the number of products that were manufactured in 2016 miraculously decreases no the pro- we are calculating gdp that is gross domestic product the production that has happened in 2016 and production is production it cannot be changed by any method we calculate the production will remain the same in that particular year so that is why technically all these three three things should be the uh, the value that we get by all these methods should be similar now there are some details in of this we will see later now first see each method separately now the expenditure method what is the expenditure method what do we first and foremost ask yourself what do we understand by expenditure spending expenditure is what expenditure is spending so expenditure method adds the spending of both private individuals and the government what is our spending our spending we go to the market and purchase something so that is our spending then is the spending by the government what does the spending by the government include for various investment projects various investments investments you know that the government makes for example if the government is planning to make a highway then that is an investment by the government so to make a highway the government will have to purchase cement and bricks and so on so that is leading to a spending by the government so it calculates gross investment then secondly it adds you know government spending on co- or consumption for uh, in this case we can say that uh, if a government you know is producing or it's not producing is buying machines 
from uh, some company that is located inside the territory because we are calculating it inside in gross domestic product so if it is you know purchasing a machine from uh, some company that is located inside the country that is again government spending for example if a government uh, purchases some uh, machine to produce you know to make railway wagons so that is also government spending and then what is also added is trade balance what is trade balance see trade balance is very simple it's basically minusing imports while calculating gdp so gdp is gross domestic product so when we say domestic product what we do is we leave out the imports because the spending on imports because what the government is importing that product has not been manufactured inside the country but government is spending on that so if we calculate gdp by you know blanketly just adding whatever the government spending is we will even add this spending of the government and say that gdp has our gdp is uh, for example an xyz number but then that spending also included spending on something that was not manufactured inside the territory of this country so we need to minus that that is what is called trade balance trade balance is basically export minus import so that we get net export and the value of net export that we get that is what that is what we add in the while calculating gdp so gdp by expenditure method adds private spending government investment government spending and trade balance now one uh, one thing you know i forgot to mention while i was say giving you the definition of national income i told you it in it you know adds the uh, what you called uh, the the economic activities that are happening inside the territory of a country and outside now the when we export something you know just think think once when we export something to some other country in which economic activity does it come in in internal economic activity or external economic activity what see it comes under internal economic activity if we are exporting something it comes under internal economic activity this is a concept get it clear why because what we are exporting is actually manufactured inside this country so that is what that is our domestic production so that comes under internal domestic activity and when we talk of this is what is the you know related to trade balance because when we talk of trade balance we mean what that we are minusing imports because import is something that is not have that is the, you know the products that we are importing have not been produced inside the territory so import is external economic activity and im uh, so, uh, so yeah import is external economic activity and export is internal economic activity so this is what i forgot to say you now let's proceed again now gdp by income approach what is gdp by income approach see it is the value of the gross domestic product it's the value of gdp that we get after adding what all the factors of production get now in the previous video i had discussed about factors of production now there are four factors of production land labor capital and entrepreneur okay and here we will even add the income of the government because when we go and purchase something for, uh, from the market it also includes taxes and taxes are the income of the government so land what will land get it will the owner of the land will get his rent the laborer he is working he will get get his uh, wage the capital that is the owner of the capital capital means what things that help in production for example uh, you know different kind of machines so the capital will get, will get its value the owner of the capital will get its value the entrepreneur that is the businessman who is actually taking the risk he will get his profit and the government will get his taxes when we add all of it what we get is gdp by income method so ultimately what does this this mean this again means the mrp because if you are producing a product for example and you are selling it in the market and you have to set a price for it what will be the price that you will set obviously you will include in in the price that you are setting you will include all the all these things the rent that you will have to pay to the um, you know to the owner of the land where you have set your factory the ways that you will have to give your laborer then the the machines that you are using you will also add the value of those machines then again you will also add your own profit and then you will also add, add you know the taxes that you have to pay to the government so again this adds up to what the mrp so see by expenditure method also what we are what what is expenditure method i said it is spending when we go and spending means what what we are consuming that is what we are going and buying from the market 
and what we are going and buying from the market is again what at which price are we going and buying from the market the mrp so see by whichever method method you know we are calculating ultimately the thing goes and rests on the final value of goods and services that is mrp so that is why i said you know by whichever method we calculate gdp the answer should be the same now uh, there are some technicalities to it we'll see later and so you understood what is gdp by income approach and what is output method output method is as simple as that adding the mrp of all the final goods and services that we get in the domestic market fine output method simply means the value of the out, uh, the value of the goods produced that again is mrp so by now you already might have got an idea that why gdp by all the three methods should be the same i think uh, still it will be clear if i give you an example just imagine there is a country in which there are only two producers two people who are manufacturing products you and me and you produce a bag that costs rupees 10 and i produce a packet of biscuit that costs rupees 5 so what will be the gdp of that country gdp is what gross domestic product and if only we both are there in that country producing and you produce only one bag that costs rupees 10 and i produce only one biscuit packet that costs rupees 5 so the ultimate products that have been there in the market are only two and people of that country have only one option that is to buy either from you or from me and we are producing only one so by expenditure method they will buy only what is available in the market and only two things are available in the market so the gdp of that country by expenditure method will be rupees 15 10 plus 5 because obviously people cannot you know spend on something that is not there and only two products are there so gdp of that country is rupees 50 by expenditure method now going by the income method you have decided to set the market value or the mrp of your product as rupees 10 and i have decided to set the market price or the mrp of my product as rupees 5 so why did you decide to keep it rupees 10 because in that 10 rupees you have already included the money that you would have to pay to all the factors of production and the and try to understand this the money that you are paying to all the factors of production is their income isn't it because you if you are the producer you need a land to produce so you are going and taking a land on rent so what do you do you pay rent to the owner of the land and what is that that is the income of that a man who who owns the land then is you are hiring people who are coming and helping you in production of your uh, commodity so those laborers you are paying them wages so that is the income of the workers who are working in your factory the wages then is the capital capital is the machine that you are using you know to produce your good so you that good is all that good also has its value so you have also added the value of that good into you know the final amount that you have set at which you will you know sell it in the market you have also kept your own profit because if you are taking the risk and you are taking the you know the responsibility and coordinating all these uh, goods together and and finally you know producing a product you have to take your profit so you have taken your profit you have added da- that to in that you have calculated you know your profit also in rupees 10 then is you also have to pay taxes to the government so when you have set rupees 10 as the market price you have also included the taxes that you will have to pay so the taxes that you pay to the government is government's income so if i calc so you know if i calculate gdp by income method still the value should be rupees 10 and if i calculate the gdp by income method then also the value you know should be rupees 5 you know because two products and we have kept them at rupees 10 and rupees 5 and that includes you know the income that we are giving to all the people who are helping us in production so gdp by expenditure method or uh, sorry gdp by income method will also be rupees 15 fine then is 
GDP by output method. Now this is very simple. GDP by output method means the MRP of the final goods and services that we get in the market. So technically all come and rest on only one thing and that is the final value of goods and services that are being produced. And all the three should be equal because GDP by expenditure method also finally boils down to the market price. GDP by income method also boils down to the market price and GDP by output method also boils down to the market price. MRP and MRP is uh, is the final value of the final goods and services. So technically all the three, if we calculate GDP by any of the three methods, they should be the same. But in reality there is a minor difference. See the difference is because of two major reasons. First is some goods are there that have been produced but they have not yet been sold in the market. So if we calculate GDP by income method then what happens is that the people who are involved in manufacturing the, that you know uh, product or those goods have already got their income so gdp by income method will calculate their income but gdp by expenditure method will not calculate the uh, price you know of that uh, good because that has not yet been sold in the market so you're getting the difference again gdp by output method will also add the price of this product because by output method means what the value the final value of the product and the final value of the product has already been decided whether it is there in the go down or whether wherever it is so the uh, the ceo of a company he measures you know he keeps a, a file you know where he measures that where he keeps an account that how much goods have been produced uh, in one particular year or in one particular month and what is the value of those goods so if a tax official or whoever is you know going and surveying the gdp uh, you know by this uh, output method what he will do is he will go and ask the CEO that show me the files that how much good have you uh, you know how much um, goods have you manufactured in this particular year he will show the pro uh, file and there the official will see you know the figure that is yes this is the output that is final value of the goods that has been produced this many good have been pro goods have been produced and this is their value but the value good has yet not been sold in the market so gdp by income method will calculate it gdp by output method will calculate it but gdp by expenditure method will not not calculate it yet so what happens this creates a minor difference then again another thing is bought on credit for example if you are a producer it might or if i am a producer i might not have all the money at the present moment to pay to each and every factor of production that has helped me you know in production for example if i tell my laborers or the workers in my factory that co please cooperate with me i cannot pay you this month i'll pay you the other month what happens if gdp so what happens is if gdp is calculated by income method their income they have not yet got they have not yet got their payment so but the good has already been produced and it has been sold in the market so gdp by expenditure method will calculate it the good has since the good has already been produced and its value has been uh, estimated you know market price has already been decided so gdp by output output method will calculate it but gdp by income method will not calculate it so these are some reasons which you know cause minor differences but overall there should not be a huge difference between gdp by any of these methods there can be minor differences and another one um, uh, thing you know you need to remember about is when i say that some goods have been produced but not yet sold that means they are there in the inventory inventory is is what inventory is what i was telling you you know the file that the companies maintain uh, that ceos maintain or the companies maintain that how much goods how many goods they have uh, produced how many of them have are there in stock how many of them are uh, have been sent to the retailer for sale so that is an inventory when i say some goods are there in the go down i might even say some goods are there in the inventory that is they are still there in the list you know of um, the stocks that are there with the company but they have not yet been sold in the market so this is the meaning of list uh, inventory it's basically a list that is maintained by the companies of all the items that they have in stock now three things that you need to remember about uh, GDP first is it calculates the value of only final goods I gave you that example jute, uh, jute farmer and jute bag example because if we calculate the sale of jute when the farmer is selling it to the producer as well as the jute uh, the bag when it is being sold in the market because that bag which is being sold in the market already has included in itself the price the, at which you know the producer bought from this farmer so if we calculate it in both ways 
at primary sale also and in final sale also then what will happen the same dude will be calculated twice so to avoid double counting what happens is that gdp calculates only the market only the market value of all the final goods and services the final value of the final goods and services that are there in the market another thing is it takes into account only newly produced goods what do i mean by only newly produced produced goods that means for example in 2000 i am calculating gdp of 2016 so what i'll do is i'll calculate only the goods and services that have been produced in the year 2016 i mean in the financial year 2016 now for example if a car was manufactured in 2010 now it has become a second hand car of course in 2016 somebody had bought it in 2016 he decides that the car has become old and he will sell it to some other person and buy a new car so this second hand sale of the car we will not calculate this because the car has not been manufactured in that particular year but what we will definitely calculate is the money that the middleman made out of it you know that who made this man who wanted to sell his car meet with the one who wanted to purchase a second hand car because even though the car has not been manufactured in 2016 financial year 2016 the service that this middleman gave that is something new that has been created in 2016 that is that service is has been created then he is giving his service so that service will be calculated because he is giving his service in that particular financial year okay so i hope this is clear then is it does not include care economy care economy is uh, as i told you i think in the beginning i gave you an example that if you teach tuition to your siblings but they are not giving you money then that does not count as a monetary transaction so gdp calculates only monetary transactions and not care economy now in the beginning we had seen the different the need to measure the gross domestic product now we will see the various uses of gross domestic product see first is it helps us you know to measure the yearly change in the growth rate of an economy because we see when we whenever we read news you know mostly we see that gdp the our economy is growing by this percent 6 percent 7 percent or declining by 1 percent whatever we see how is this percentage change how is this gross growth rate measured it is by gdp isn't it so one use of gdp is it helps us to measure the yearly change in the growth rate of an economy how for example in 2016 if the gross domestic product was rupees 100 that is all the goods and services that were produced in 2016 added up to rupees 100 and in 2017 all the goods and services that were produced added up to rupees 107 so in gdp in 2017 was 107 and gdp in 2016 was rupees 100 so when we compare both this both these figures then what we can say is the growth rate from 2016 to 2017 has been 7% so this is how gdp you know this is one use of gdp how it helps us to measure the year, yearly change in the growth rate of an economy okay this helps us to decide the growth rate the percentage growth rate second is it helps us to show the internal strength of an it shows the internal strength of an economy again i told you in the beginning internal strength of an economy because it shows how many goods and services have been produced are being produced in an economy in one particular year so again if we compare that in 2015 or 2016 this much was the total production of this country and in 17 this is the pro- total production of this country so we can compare and we can know that the, what is the internal strength of an economy how much economic activity is going on inside the country so gross domestic product and since the word domestic is used it shows the internal strength of an economy fine and third is it is the figure that is used by the world bank and the international monetary fund and other agencies to uh, rate for example we have different indexes coming you know that by uh, this index india ranks this much by some index india ranks this much so how are these index calculated they are calculated you know or by seeing these gdp figures there are other parameters also for example if they say in health index india ranks here so obviously you know they will take gdp into account the economic growth rate as well as they will take the other data and theories that are required to reach at that particular index from the health sector but generally in the economic sector what happens these figures are used to calculate various indexes then is the international monetary fund and the world bank also uses these datas when they have to decide on giving loans or when they have to prepare a ranking of various nations that are you know uh, their members 
so that is also when gdp is used for example if two countries go to the world bank you know and ask for a loan so a country that is having more economic activity world bank will give first preference in giving loan to that particular country than the country which is not having uh, you know comparatively uh, who, than the country who is having comparatively less economic activity okay so this is another use of calculating gdp uh, now let us um, see some questions previous year upsc questions that has come to under to you know to see how well you have understood so let's go in 2013 there was a question in upsc that the national income of a country for a given period is equal to the total value of goods and services produced by the nationals or the sum of the total consumption and investment expenditure or the sum of personal income of all individuals or the money value of the final goods and services produced now i request you to please pause the video read the uh, you know options that have been given over there carefully and try to eliminate the options first first try to see which option won't be there and then try to reach to the correct answer now the correct answer is d but before we see why it is d but we have to see why it is not a not b and not option c see what is option a say it says national income is the total value of the goods and services produced by the nationals now here the tricky word comes is nationals now who are nationals a national is anyone who has a origin in india you know either he has an origin in india or his parents had an origin in india they all form they are all indian nationals they may be staying in different countries of the world they may even have citizenship of that particular country but that has nothing to do you know with nationality a nationality is is by origin and citizenship is by the country you are staying in okay so it doesn't have anything uh, to do with uh, citizenship in any way national so it is said the total value of goods and services produced by the nationals now what we know is the the income or the produce of the nationals is definitely added in national income but that is not the only thing that is added to national income see the sentence says that nas the national income of a country for a given period is equal to what so the national income is not equal to the total value of goods and services produced by the nationals it also adds the domestic value of the goods and services produced but this is missing from the sentence so uh, option number a is not the answer option number b is it says that national income is the sum of total consumption and investment expenditure yeah of course national income does include the total consumption and investment expenditure but it also includes other things like export isn't it it also includes export it also includes the uh, you know gdp by income method that is it also includes the and it also includes the money that the foreigners and, and i'm sorry i'm using the word foreigners not foreigners the money that the indian nationals or people in india of india you know who are working in some other country they are sending to the country it also includes all of that it does not only limit itself to expenditure so national income is even is you know this consumption and investment expenditure is a part of national income it is not equal to national income so option number b is incorrect then comes option number c that is the sum of personal income of all individuals yeah very important it is it it, it definitely has the personal it, you know national income does calculate the personal income of all individuals we have seen gdp by income method but then it also includes the income of the government so this particular statement is also incorrect because that also because it is an incomplete statement too and option number d is the money value of the final goods and services produced yes national income is equal to the money value of the final goods and services produced why because when this line you read this line it is a complete sentence sentence you know it in, in itself it calculates the final goods and services now i will not go into much details of explaining this sentence now you just get a brief idea of this because this one we will cover it when we will do gross national product it will become more clear to you so let us move to the next question the next question was in 2011 when it was asked that a rapid increase in the rate of inflation is sometimes attributed to the base effect what is the base effect now this i had covered in my previous video so uh, since you are new here and this is the first video i am making it in english but still i had explained uh, somewhere in this video that what is base effect 
so try to recall what is base effect and um, read the options and then i'm saying you the answer so the answer is number c why number c now as i told you first you try to eliminate so while eliminating what will you do why is it not option number a what does option number a, a read option number a reads it is the base effect is the impact of the drastic deficiency in supply due to failure of crops now if you remember base effect it has nothing to do with failure of crops what is base effect base effect is a constant price that is said by the government you know like present base effect is the price that was there in 2011-12 that is used to rule out inflation so it has nothing to do with failure of crops that is out then is option number b says it is the impact of surge in demand due to rapid economic growth so even if we don't know anything about base effect and we just recall that it has something to do with inflation by common sense we can say that it has nothing to do with demand so option b is out and option c says that it is the impact of price level of previous year on the calculation of inflation rate true because base effect is used to calculate inflation rate you know it because only when we compare with the base effect will be understand will be able to understand what is the rate of inflation in present so option c is the correct answer and option d automatically gets eliminated because it says none of the uh, statements and all okay now let's move on to the next question now the next question had come in upsc 2015 uh, you know this is a factual question so it has nothing much explanation in it but since it relates to real gross domestic product and uh, nominal gdp i have included it in it so that you get uh, you know to just recall about what is real gdp and what is nominal gdp this again was covered in the previous video so if you do not know the answer to this i really don't uh, you know have uh, much to say because uh, still in this video itself somewhere i had uh, given you a brief idea about what is real gdp and what is nominal gdp uh, pause this video and just see the options and try to understand what might be the answer but anyway if you recall this concept of gdp uh, real gdp and nominal gdp still if you don't know the figures you won't know you you know you won't be able to answer this question because this is a factual one so just pause the video and try to recall uh, real gdp and nominal gdp see whether you can uh, you have understood the concepts or not then i'm telling you the answer the answer is number b which states that the gdp at market price now what is gdp at market price gdp at market price is nothing but nominal gdp so it says that gdp at market price has steadily increased in the last decade so uh, now if you know the figures you know that this is the correct answer uh, this was the correct answer by 2015 data now i just uh, checked it you know it's the same now but still i advise you to recheck it before uh, you know you go to give your prelims and uh, mains okay now let's move on to the next question the next question had come in upsc 2011 now this relates to closed economy what is a closed economy uh, again i had covered in my previous video the different type of economies that exist now even in that video i had uh, you know somehow missed what's a closed economy so uh, you, you just pause the video and again go through the options and recall in your mind you know just by common sense try to think that what's a closed economy because it's very simple and then i'll give you the answer now here the answer is number option number d why because a closed economy is an economy in which you know not in which a economy which does not neither imports nor exports no economy in the present day is a closed economy still uh, you know people give the example of north korea that uh, north korea is a closed economy because it has so many sanctions and it's living in a different era in itself i don't know what that country is doing but anyway i person i you know i confidently believe that no country in the present world can be a self sufficient economy even north korea we know about north korea we have seen the condition of north korea so even if you know uh, it is said that north korea is a closed economy still uh, i don't think it's uh, true that it can live on its own but still a closed economy is an economy that neither imports nor exports that is it has closed uh, doors you know it's sort of closed doors but um, fine so the answer this is the answer is option number d now we have come almost to the end of the video now before ending it i would just say to all of you seeing this video that please believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself who else will believe in yourself it's you first who have to believe in yourself that yes you can do it and trust me if you are determined and if you really have set this as your goal and you have set aside your distractions because in the present day you know there's no um, 
you know a dearth of distractions so you you know just if you're ready to work hard it's just one year how many times can a person get failure tell me once twice thrice if you are steady and if you know that you are putting your 100% you can definitely do it and the quote that i have put in here that the best view comes after the hardest climb why because if the road was easy don't you think everyone would have become a civil servant isn't it but only how many there are so many people who prepare for the civil services but how many people are actually prepared when they go and give the exam just don't go by the numbers you know the number of people who are appearing go by how much the persons know and how much prepared are they when they are going to the exam so just don't think about the numbers don't think about anything don't think about the vacancy and all that that is not in your hands do what is there in your hands believe in yourself and i'm very sure that you will be able to do it and i am there you know to guide you through economic so anyway if you like this video then please give it you know a thumbs up i'll say give your feedback in the comment section and share this video with your friends okay so thank you thank you for listening this video